A lot of communities still dealing with a surge in COVID-19 cases, and that leaves young children vulnerable. They still are not eligible to receive the vaccine. However, doctors and research teams have been working to get through clinical trials, and that includes the work that's being done at Driscoll Children's Hospital in Corpus Christi. We're joined now by Dr. Jaime Fergie. He is Director of Infectious Diseases at Driscoll. So did the children's vaccine perform as well as you wanted it to? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here today. Uh, you know, the, the vaccine in children over five worked perfectly well in terms of the development of uh, immunity. Uh, there was an issue with children between the ages two and just under five in which the level of immunity that was achieved in the laboratory, in tests, was not as good as what we expected because we want to compare, want to have levels similar to the ones we see in young adolescents and adults, but it was not the same. It was there, but not the same. Doctor, how much of a difference is there between an adult vaccine dosage and a children's vaccine dosage? So there are three doses. You know, the adult uh, that we use for ages 12 and over is 30 micrograms. Then for the 5 to just under 12, we use 10 micrograms. And for the 6 month through uh, under 5 years of age is 3 micrograms, just one-tenth of what the adults receive, 3 micrograms. So we're waiting to see when this vaccine becomes available to children. And um, we're hearing that not a lot of parents are signing up for this vaccine as soon as it's made available. Yes, and I mean, I'm concerned about that, first of all, because it's already authorized for children over the age of five. And I think I want to tell, I want to tell the parents, just take advantage of that because you not only prevent the infection in your child, uh, who may be sick, uh, who may, you know, have complications, who may have uh, complication after COVID and may transmit it. Uh, so take advantage of that. Just just get them vaccinated. And then uh, we are in a situation in which the Food and Drug Administration asked the Pfizer to submit the data for the emergency use authorization on the younger kids, even though uh, the thinking right now is, that the younger kids, their full vaccination is going to be three doses. But the, the idea is to begin as soon as possible to give the first two doses. And then when the data is out there for three doses, then to give three doses. But I mean, we don't know that for sure yet. If a parent comes into your office and says, doctor, how do I know this is safe? How do I know it's good for my kids and they're going to be fine when, when they take this vaccine? What do, you, what do you tell them? Well, you know, we have been doing the studies here. We're one of the many sites in the country who are doing these studies. And, uh, we, you know, I look at all the data globally and everything is available and is constantly looked at uh, by outside regulators to be sure there's no problem. And so far, there have been nothing of concern. You know, obviously, the usual thing, the pain, the swelling, the little redness, the side of injection, some malaise, occasional fever, that has been seen with the vaccine in children, but nothing major we, that we have seen. So I can tell them, look, the vaccine is safe. We have a ton of experience, of course, in adolescents and adults. Uh, millions and millions of doses. We know all the side effects that can occur. Uh, and we know the real problem is getting COVID. You go down this list of, of, of possible side effects from the vaccine and then tell us the list of the possible effects of COVID on children. And it, there really is such a huge contrast. You bet. I mean, because that, that's where you get the real problem is if you get COVID. Uh, obviously, the children don't get it as severe as adults, but there are many children who have underlying conditions. Many children, for example, even just diabetes, obesity is so prevalent, puts you at a high risk of ending up in the hospital. Uh, children who have uh, uh, chronic cardiac conditions, of which there are many, or chronic pulmonary conditions, if they get COVID, they do worse. And also, a child who is otherwise normal, you do not know which one is going to have a poor outcome, which one is going to have to end up in the hospital. And also, there is this so-called long COVID. Some children, the same as adolescents and adults, I get it. They're going to feel fatigued. They're going to feel weak. They're not going to be able to, con to concentrate well in their studies for weeks after they get it. And beyond that, there's this multi-inflammatory systemic syndrome that we see as a really bad complication of COVID in children. Doctor, you've been with us several times now. You've been working on this on this vaccine for what seems like a couple of years now. We've gone through the regular uh, COVID, then we went to the Delta, then we went Omicron, now there's stealth. How far ahead can you look and how much can you 
basically prepare for what might be ahead for us? You know, it, it, it's a very tough uh, situation. We, you know, we don't know what new variant is going to come out there, but we know that the more people are vaccinated, the less variants are going to occur. Uh, we know that even though the variants like the Omicron is very different from the original strain, uh, it's still the vaccine offer protection. So the best thing we can do is to use what we have and simultaneously companies like Pfizer and, and Moderna and other companies who work in COVID vaccine are developing more vaccines for COVID targeting new variants so that in the future we may just use the vaccine with slightly different content in it. We sure do appreciate all the hard work that you and your staff have been doing during this pandemic. Uh, Dr. Jaime Fergie, Director of Infectious Diseases at Driscoll Children's Hospital in Corpus Christi. We hope we don't have to keep doing these interviews and we get to the endemic. Wouldn't that be nice? It, it certainly will be. And I, I just want to say thank you to all the parents and all the children who participate in the study. They are the real heroes, the children who participate. Thank you. All right, doctor, thanks to them and, and thanks to you for um, all this dedication that you have to finding, uh, finding a vaccine that will help us through all this. Yes, we appreciate it.